Welcome back to Sim Project, everybody. Sitting down here in airplane mode. Um, it's been a while actually since I've flown in, in airplane mode. Um, you just, you've probably, if you've watched the channel, I uh, won a VR headset, won a MetaQuest 3 on a cruise last uh, last fall or last December actually, just before Christmas. Um, yeah, and then built a, a nice set of uh, helicopter controls, all 3D printed from uh, 737 DIY Sim. And I've been doing a ton of VR flying, uh, mostly the uh, EC35 helicopter. But uh, yeah, VR helicopter, it's it's phenomenal. But this is not what we're here to talk about today. I want to talk about touch screens. Um, I built this guy. This is the Garmin uh, GTC 580. And I've got the 570 for the uh, Honda Jet as well. I've had a couple comments on the videos. People can't get the touch screen to work. And that's because they're trying to use touchscreen control simply by using the window pop-out command, that uh, right mouse click and left control key or left alt key. I can't remember which one it is. Um, but yeah, if you push the two of them at the same time over top of the window, it'll pop the window up for you um, to see it in Flight Sim. And uh, yeah, however, the problem is Flight Sim doesn't support external touchscreens like this one. You can pop the gauge up on that screen and you'll see it uh, and you can move your mouse over, over it and make it work. But when you touch the touch screen, nothing happens, which is kind of ironic, right? Like if the mouse works, why doesn't the touch screen work? But anyways, what you need, and uh, I'm gonna, I got OBS running on the, on the main system here and just look over the glare shield here so I can see what I'm looking at. So I can pull up the uh, box and get that up for some reason because OBS is only recording uh, a small section of my, uh, my 43 inch screen here. Or, I'm sorry, 58-inch screens were up to now on these things, isn't it? There was a video on all that, too, when I did the uh, triple screens. But, yeah, um, MSFS Pop-Out Panel Manager is what you need. And I'm not going to walk through a complete setup because it's it's pretty quick. There's a, a small little, I think it's PDF, maybe just a readme text file, giving you the rough idea how to work through it. And I've got the Vision Jet one already built right here. And there's really only three things you got to worry about with it. And that is... My, sorry, my GoPro camera keeps going to sleep, the forward screen. I can't see if I'm actually, you know, in frame here. But uh, yeah, so Popo Panel Manager, MSFS, as you can see, Vision Jet, Active Aircraft is Vision Jet. This is because I've created this. Like I said, I'm not going to walk through show you how to do the whole thing. But there's like three items you got to worry about in this program, and it's to make everything work. The biggest one, of course, is, as you can see, there's my left GTC 580 panel. You see the little hand there that's green? That means that touch capability is enabled. That's the big one. The two others you gotta worry about, and we'll drop the menu down right here. And the very first item, you see that's turned on. Power on is required to pop out panels on a cold start for G1000 aircraft only if needed. Well, it's G, it's anything with the Garmin Avionics suite in it that's connected to default uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator aircraft. So like the Vision Jet, um, the TBM, because that of course has got one, the King Air, uh, anything like that, anything that uses that, uh, that default uh, G1000, G3000 setup, you gotta have that turned on or it won't, this just won't pop the panels out for you. So that's that one. The other one you wanna, you need to turn on use legacy custom cameras to select panel sources if that's not turned on you can't actually make the panels you'll click them and it'll want to make panels everywhere on you you turn that on and you're golden those are the three biggest things you got to know with this software program and uh yeah so basically you know you get your program loaded you'd have a blank one and i'll just flip to a blank screen here just so you can see what it looks like see oh that's the uh the p36 and we click on, actually we click on that right there. See, we can create a new profile and put a name in. I'm not going to go through all that stuff, but let's bounce back to the Vision Jet here. That was my Honda Jet one. I got one for the King Air. And there's our Vision Jet. So yeah, so I got a, a primary flight display, a multi-flight display, and the left GTC 580, because of course the Vision Jet's got three of them in it. So I'm using the left one to run this panel. And uh, you can see all the dimensions there. So these are all customizable once you actually start the software and uh, pick the panel you want to pop out. You have the option, you can adjust the sizes, you can adjust their positions. I, of course, I put them down here on my uh, on my 3D built panel. And uh, yeah, and then the other ones, which 
this is my personal preference because I like to use full screen. I'm not a Windows mode person. Um, full screen mode for the primary flight display. And the other one, and this is actually kind of the fourth one you really need to, auto game refocus. Now, what happens here is if you take your mouse and move your mouse away from the, the actual active window for Microsoft Flight Simulator, any controls you might have set, like be it throttle, yoke controls, any buttons like that, tied directly through the Microsoft Flight Simulator control configuration, all that stuff will stop working. The moment Flight Sim loses primary focus, you can't make any of those controls. Now, I've gone and programmed mine through FSU IPC and SPAD Next. I don't have that problem, but if you don't have that auto, auto game refocus on, like none of your keyboard commands work, nothing. So that's kind of the big fourth one you gotta have. And as you can see, for the same deal for the uh, for my multifunction display, the secondary display here, uh, that's full screen. Same thing, auto game refocus. And the big one, like you probably wouldn't have to worry about having those turned on for the most part, unless you by mistakenly move your mouse down to that lower screen. The big one on the touch screen, of course, is because you're going to touch that screen. The mouse is going to, over there. The main panel is losing focus. Auto game refocus has to be turned on for your touchscreen. And in the menus, up here on the little gear, we can go in and there is a place to um, adjust it under touch settings, I believe. Yeah, right there. So amount of middle seconds delay. Oh, that's the touch up, touch down. Yeah, so I've got a, a 20 second or 20 millisecond delay. Um, so when you touch it, it doesn't do like, a, like an auto repeat and draw a whole bunch of stuff. You actually have to lift your finger and, and put it back on. And there's a small delay on that. And then there is... Uh, like I say, there is an option in here somewhere where you can adjust that time. I'm pretty sure I went with the uh, um, the default time of like a, a second or a half a second from not touching the, the keys until the game refocus automatically comes back. So that's basically um, that in a nutshell. Like I'll put this uh, program in the description of the video, of course, so you know what to do. The other thing you've got to know with this, and I guess this is the, the five important things. Boy, I kind of messed that count up, didn't I? Um, as you can see, we're in, well, my two side monitors are in full screen. Um, just so I can run this with OBS and keep track of stuff, I had to put Flight Simulator just, it's in Windows mode, expanded full screen. Um, if I tried to start this right now, it would go for a crap and fall apart. Nothing would work. And that's because you've got to have the windows very close to the same size and location for when you created your um, pop-up panels. And if you didn't, um, the mouse goes nuts. It doesn't know where stuff is. Things will load. Things won't be in the right position. So I'm going to go and I'll just minimum. Let me pull panel manager. Oh, I missed that. That disappeared on me. So we'll just shrink this down and we'll get OBS down out of the way. We don't need to see that double screen going on down there. Let's minimize that. Pull our panel manager down below and we need to get back inside our aircraft too. Okay, there's that. And I'm just going to go down to pop out panel manager here and I'm going to click pop out start. And the moment you touch it, keep your hands off everything else. Like I said, don't touch another thing or things will just go crazy on you. So we'll just touch the mouse and we're just going to wait. So turning on batteries, you can see the panel in the aircraft is lighting up. And it's going to reset views and I'll show you here as stuff comes to life down here. So there we go. So our primary flight display is moved over. Our multifunction's over. There's our GTC. Now the power is back off and it's going to full screen all these for us. And there we go. Pop out successful. We're good to start flying. So we'll go back to uh, go back to this and I'll just jump us into full screen now and get rid of my taskbar up there. Okay. So we're in the aircraft. We're going to turn the batteries on now and power things up and fly. Another note, however, especially with the touch screen when you're doing this, when you turn your battery on, don't just jump and start trying to do stuff on your on your, that touch screen. Don't start, you know, trying to enter a flight plan. You gotta kind of give the aircraft um, a few seconds to get get everything up, get powered up, get the displays figured out. And I think this comes back to the whole Windows losing focus thing. If you start trying to do stuff on that touch panel, um, you'll your mouse you'll find will jump back, and the touch panel will be a real laggy and not do what it's supposed to. And, and I think that's that whole Windows losing focus. It doesn't like that. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn our battery back on. And everything will power back up here. And as you can see, our touch screen is lit up. And you see we've got no data, stuff like that lit. 
So we're going to give this a minute just to power up, wait for the, uh, the testing to finish. Okay, everything's up now. So our alignment, everything's good. Our aircraft position is here. So grab our touch screen and I'll talk about this in a minute. Yeah, I'm going to build something to hold this. So we'll just uh, jam it over here next to our throttle quadrant. And we're going to go to our multifunction settings and we can click flight plan. And there we go. Everything's good to go. I can add all of our where we're leaving from, where we're going to, select procedures. So I have a flight plan loaded, so we'll just, or in sim brief from a flight earlier. So we'll go to our sim brief option here in the vision jet and then port that because Key West is kind of where we're sitting right now. And there we go. There's everything uploaded, ready to go. We can hit our procedure button, pick our approach into uh, um, Fort Lauderdale, you know, pick your transition, whatever you want, load it up. We're good to go. And we can change this. We have our radio settings and everything. Everything that would be available to your mouse in here in the aircraft if you're using your mouse on the touch panel or on the actual panels in the uh, sim. Except solid hardware you can actually put your fingers on and do something with. So yeah, pop-up panel manager. Pretty easy, pretty simple to get working once you get working. Um, I have had a couple people comment that they can't get a touch screen to work in uh, Windows 11. This is Windows 11 I'm using. And I'm going to blame it on, I can't remember the name of this touch screen, who made it. Um, I don't have my other glasses on, so I can't read her. I'll put, a, I'll, put the, I'll put it in the text underneath me. I run my touch panels directly into the onboard video card of my computer, which would be the, what is that, that Intel... Intel 55 or 550, whatever the, the default card is on my motherboard. Um, most motherboards have them. Most people disable them because, of course, like everybody else, I've got a, you know, I got a, a higher end, you know, 4060 card, and that's what runs my triple screens. But, you know, I need extra ports, so I turn that card on, I plug that in that. For these screens here, I've got a, a USB a con video card. It's kind of neat, actually. I'm going to do a video on that later. Um, but yeah, because this is plugged into the um, that onboard card when the computer starts, this becomes the primary display when power's up. And for some reason, uh, right off the hop, Windows won't detect the touch screen. And I think that's a lot of problem people have. Um, so I've got it fed down here to a powered uh, USB hub. And when I power everything up before I start the sim, I just reach down and you cycle, just shut the power off to that port on the hub. You know, give it four or five seconds. The screens will all resize and readjust because they're losing a monitor of course because that's the main power of the monitor and the touch screen um or the touch interface turn the uh, usb port back on everything comes back up everything resizes and then it works just fine and i've got two touch screens i've got this one i've got the one for the honda jet which is uh, same thing except of course this being a landscape uh, image the honda jet of course works in portrait mode because that's the way the 570s work on that one i've had both touch screens working both of them up at the same time uh, without any issues so if you're having issues like i say in windows 11 with it uh get everything turned on cycle the power to the touch screen and then try and recalibrate it and you may have to do that every time you turn the computer on it just might be the touch screen you're using so i think that about covers it with uh on um, pop-up panel manager like i say it's really simple easy we got all of our panels here everything works and updates um of course on the uh vision jet none of my hardware works for uh um you know with my stuff and my cat's up there. I hear him meow and he must be getting hungry. It's getting close to dinner time. But yeah, so that's that. Um, yeah, it's a cool little program. It's free. Uh, you can make a donation to the creator. I have made a donation because he just makes life so much easier for this to work. And that's about it as far as panel manager. It's pretty cool. So as far as what's going on with the sim, um, some of my free time, I've been playing around with uh, Onshape, which is a 3D modeling software, like a CAD. Um, and I want to build, because as you can see, we'll get this up. So that's the Vision Jet. Um, pretty simple looking panel, actually, the two G3000s. A pretty simple design glare shield. You know, just a couple 90 degree corners each end. Gets a little thicker in the middle. And then the, uh, the three units down below. So I've been working in Onshape, trying to design this panel layout. And it's really easy, of course, because, well, let me rephrase it. It's not really easy. But because I already have the size of this thing, and that's, that's a real, and I'll put a video link, or I'll put a link for that video here at the end, uh, building that thing up. 
that is actually a one-to-one -one scale of the real life unit. So when it comes to building it, like there's three of them there, so I can put three of them side by side and on shape. And right off the hop, I've pretty much got almost my whole width. I know how big those panels are, or the display size, it's the bezel. I'm having a hard time coming up with those. Uh, like I said, the guys at uh, Flight Sim DIY, they are working on a Garmin 3000, so it'll be close. I'd have to, I'd, I'd really love to get it, like, I, I've got access to a 3D scanner. I'd really love uh, to be able to get inside a real vision jet and, and map this out with a 3D scanner. And the autopilot, I've actually got that. I've got it started. Um, I don't know why I haven't finished it. It's, it's all printed. It's just a matter of assembly. I've even got most of the circuit boards built. So yeah, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to rip this all apart. We're going to try and build a nice vision jet one. The GTCs, of course, I'm only going to have two of them. I'm going to put two of them here uh, because I have a Satec yoke in the way. Now, I would, uh, I'd love to swap that over to the side stick because I do fly the vision jet a lot and the, the SR22, which both have the side stick. The only side stick on the market, I think it's by Thrustmaster. It's, it's like an Airbus side stick. So it would probably work, it's pretty similar. It's missing a lot of the buttons, like I, I've got the hi-hat and stuff I use for some view changes. I've got some buttons for Discord and V-Pilot, uh, trim control, like most of those are there uh, on this, that stick, um, not all of them. And the other problem is then I got a perfectly good like alpha yoke and what do I do with that, right? I probably could sell it, but you know, maybe I don't want to. Um, but yeah, so I'm not sure what I'll do with a side stick. Maybe we'll just leave the yoke here and I'm going to have a vision jet with a yoke instead of a side stick. But yeah, so that's going to be a project that's probably going to hit more in the fall because it's almost summertime here in southern Ontario and Canada where I am. And uh, I'm going to be outside doing other stuff. So yeah, so that's basically the update. Um, if you hung around this long, great. Thanks, I appreciate it. Uh, those of you who have subscribed to the channel, I'm not going to ask anybody else to subscribe. Like, I'm, I'm not out to make money in these videos. If you want to subscribe, awesome if you want to hit the like super great it does help the algorithm so more people will see these but yeah those of you who have subscribed like awesome like i said i think i'm at like 973 or 75 subscribers so almost at a thousand um i don't have the watch time there i'm not going to get make any money off these I'm, I'm not worried about that and uh yeah so like i said thanks for watching uh if you subscribe thanks if you don't want to hey that's that's on you too i'm okay with that um yeah and uh i don't know blue sky up Talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.